But through time, I saw that tumbleweed as a thing of beauty. As it rolled like no other plant could roll in the desert. Amen. I looked at it as it started out as a little spring. It grew into this green thing. And then it dried up and shriveled up. And then the wind would blow it across the desert floor. And I thought, I know where that started out. It started out in a little spring like that. Because I got thousands of them in my yard. <laughs> you see, it became part of me. But in 1884, Moses Langley Wicks came and developed the city of Lancaster. In 1886, Palmdale was formed by westward Swiss and German settlers who in 1888 actually named Palmdale Palmenthal. Palmenthal. Because they thought that the Joshua trees were palm trees. Boy, did they ever have it wrong. Those are palm trees. Where's the water? <laughs> I don't mind if they're called palm trees. Just give me some water. But for over 120 years, church, this valley has been the prepping grounds of this Acts 238 message. God has been preparing this place for 120 years for today. This first apostolic message was preached here in the early 1950s. And so for the past 55 to 60 years, it has been tilled and watered by God and by men of God for the harvesting of souls that God has ordained you and I to partake of in 2009. You and I must get the vision that it is God's desire for 2009. that we are on the precipice of a supernatural move of God. And that we, through clear understanding of this vision, are being groomed to the positions that God has awaited for 120 years to fulfill in this valley. You see, we are living in perilous times. And the writing is on the wall. God is coming soon. I said God is coming soon. Amen. If you've never looked to your newspapers or your media and forums, you will see that the world around you is changing very rapidly. Very rapidly. The one world currency is not far away. And when you see that monetary system start to shape itself, you will realize that the coming of the Lord is even growing that much sooner. These world leaders are starting to set the stage for this one world leader. And so I want you to know that we are coming to the coming of the Lord. But there is a lot of unfinished work that must first be completed. Let me bring it a little closer to home. There are nearly 400,000 souls that need to be reached in this valley. They have never heard, repent of your sins, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They have never heard the message that declares, except you be born of water and of spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God. There are people in this valley that walk under the banner of grace, but can I tell you, everybody walks under that banner. God said, except you be born of water and of spirit, you will never, ever see the kingdom of God. You will never walk on streets of gold. You will never have eternal joy, eternal peace, no sorrow, no pain, no sickness, no death. There is a message that must get out to our community that God has a road that we must travel. It's not optionary today. It's not whether you want to or you don't. 
stands in the way is this thing called vision. For some of us, we'll grasp it. For some, I'll have to do this again next year. Will it be easy? No. Can it be done? Yes. Will it be free? No. Will it, but will the cost be worth it? Yes. You see, there's something about seeing a life change. I don't know about you, but to see your lives change and impact you. Anybody get sick and tired of being sick and tired? Anybody just tired of running the same old rat race? Amen. Isn't it kind of weird? The game never changes, just the faces change. It's just the same old, same old. Amen. That's how it works, folks. The only thing that's going to change in your life will be when you allow God to move freely within it. No constraints. No, you can come in and do everything you want, God, but leave that alone. I'll take care of that. I'll personally make sure that that gets thrown in. I won't tell you. When God comes in, everything goes out. I said when God gets in, everything goes out. He is the ultimate interior designer. He'll get inside of your heart and redesign it in ways you never thought or dreamt of. He will do things for you that you never thought were possible. There are family members, loved ones that you want to see lives change. You've tried and done everything you know to do, but nothing's changed. I want to tell you, in 2009, I want you to get a hold of the vision. You get a hold of what's happening here. You say, I have got to be there at 10 o'clock when those doors open. You can have every excuse under the sun. And if you'll all know, I never argue on Because in my heart of hearts, I say, that's your blessing. I took it. Amen. You missed the blessing. The blessings happened at 10 one Glad you got here at 11.30, but the blessings are already all poured out. Praise God, you got some words to go home and chomp on some words. Amen. Yeah. There's something about the anticipation. I don't know about you, I kind of look at it as a Sunday, uh, what do they call that day, Black Friday? Where they line up like on Thursday, full bellies full with Thanksgiving turkey and all that other stuff all. Got the quivers, got the shakes because they're so filled up with food. Sitting out in front of that Walmart or that Best Buy or wherever they're at, they're just huddled up with their little blanket, 20 degrees below zero. They're, I can't wait to get my other uh, uh, What do you get? What are you coming for? I'm coming for iPod. What are you going to iPod? You're going to say $15. And you're going to freeze yourself off just so you can be a part of Black Friday. Wow. I wonder what would happen if that same spirit got on us on Saturday night and we started going, oh, I can't wait to get in the house of God. with the Holy 